This episode of Addicted to Salsa is brought to you by Gabellini Dance Shoes. For more information, visit gabellini.addictedtosalsa.com. Okay, to get started, uh, again, we're gonna count on one. Uh, we're gonna start off with a right turn for the ladies. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, okay? Uh, except, of course, uh, as she, before she finishes turning, I also finish turning and face in the same direction that the lady's facing, okay? Uh, let's try it again. One, two, three, five, six, seven, one, okay? Now, for a windmill, if you've never done a windmill before, uh, it's really very similar to a crossbar lead with, with an outside turn. So if this is 12 o'clock and this is 6 o'clock, the lady is going to be turning clockwise, okay? So it's very similar to this move if we go back on 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, okay? Now, the windmill is just a variation in style of that move. So when you do a, a, a fundamental move like a crossbar lead with an outside turn in a different fashion, for example, with a, in windmill form, which her, her arm is, is more straight, you have to realize that you have to maintain the lead the same, okay? You may change the style, but you have to maintain that lead. And the lead here is that you wanna provide that type of rotation, that she's gonna be rotating so that she gets the lead that she wants to do a cross rally with turn, okay? From here, since in the video it might not be so noticeable, I'm not just raising the hand up, I'm actually moving it clockwise out to first provide that lead and gain momentum. The second part of the windmill, I keep the hand straight, but it just goes straight down and up for the ladies. So really the first one is the key, key, uh, key lead and key move so that ladies maintain the same, um, I guess, movement, you know, cross bar lead with an outside turn while you change the style of it, okay? So from here, this is still on, this is good. Uh, we go, uh, ladies go back on one, guys, you go forward on one. We do one, two, three, five, six, seven, and you are gonna end up op uh, doing an open break on one. Okay, so now with uh, real counts and real momentum, okay, uh, we do one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one. Okay, now a regular copa, I'd go back on one, two, three, and use something with the hips. Now, because this move is a little bit more complex and we're tying it to a crossbar lead 180, uh, we're actually gonna move the control point from the hips if I'm using too much technical talk, the control points, no. Uh, instead of uh, stopping the lady on the, her hips, we're gonna be using her shoulders because we gain more control of her frame, okay? So as she goes back on one, two, three, we're gonna use both of our hands to stop her, you know, kind of on the shoulder blades, and spin her like a top so she can turn as she's doing the copa this way, okay? So, Maybe from a different angle, we'll just try it from here so you can kind of see and I'll kind of move out of the way. So we go back on one, two, three. So as you can see, I use both of my hands, one to stop her, one to control the frame. And then from here, I use both of my hands, more this one than, than the left one, but two points of control is better than one. So I come here and I spin her like a top, okay? So going back to um, this position. Again, we're gonna do the open break. One, two, three for the copa. We do five, six, and seven, okay? As she's finishing seven, we're just gonna go in for a cross baby with turn. So as you see her back from that turn, you're gonna now again use your right hand to provide um, force. So you can come in and do that cross lead 180, okay? So from here, just to review a cross lead 180, we're from here, we do seven, do seven, one, two, three to open up and then launch her for her styling, whatever she wants to do, okay? So from the very beginning, here we go. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, 
five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Ladies, it's time to break down all of the styling for the entire windmill combination. So we're gonna start with our left hand styled out here with our wrists nice and flexed. And we're gonna start going back on one, two, three. Here's our prep for a right turn. So we bring our arm in on five, six, seven. Here the guy is starting to lead us through the windmill combination. So we realize that we don't have any room for this arm. We don't want it to get tangled up. So we're gonna keep it planted right here on our left hip. Here we go through. Then we can bring our arm back out. It's safe for styling back on one. Now I'm gonna switch angles. We left off on the open break with styling out on one. And here we're gonna lead into the copa. So we have one, two, three. For this part, our arms are up above our head and it's important to keep our abs nice and engaged and tight because we're gonna go into this spin that he's leading us with our shoulder blades. So we want our bodies to all move together instead of being a little bit floppier. So we're tight like this. We're gonna go into our spin. On this part, you have the option of bringing your arm down there for additional styling. Okay, now ladies also have an additional styling depending on guys what you do. Now if you come out of that cross lead 180 and you provide enough force to launch them out of that 180, they're able to use that momentum and add more styling and that's what we're gonna do. So if we're here, let's just move a little bit more back. If we're here, imagine I'm doing the 180 and we end up here and I'm gonna provide him with enough force to come out. So here, ladies, we have the option of doing a kick on one. We can kick up going one, two, three. For this kick to break it down, you're gonna put your toe against, against the ground, creating a lot of friction. Bring it up, keeping your toe pointed, and back down. Guys, whenever you launch them and you think they're actually gonna do some type of styling like that, make sure that when they do that move, you provide stability with your arm. It's very, very important, because if it's floppy, they'll end up falling over, and you don't want the woman to fall over. Thank you.